Hello and welcome back to Epileptic Disorders Roadmap to EEGs. My name is Erfan Sheikh and in this module we will talk about idiopathic generalized epilepsies. In this module we will go over childhood epsons epilepsy, juvenile epsons epilepsy, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, and epilepsy with generalized tonic-clonic seizures alone. We will discuss the principal EEG features behind these epilepsies and cover some basic clinical features that should help point you towards the right diagnosis when encountering such patients. As in the previous modules, we will go over EEG findings in both the bipolar and average and referential montages. Before we go over the various subtypes of IgE, we will go over some EEG characteristics. The EEG classically shows findings of generalized spiking wave discharges, typically 2.5 to 5.5 Hz. These spiking wave discharges are brought out by drowsiness, sleep, and on awakening. During sleep, the discharges can be fragmented with focal features. In untreated JME patients, there can be a photoproxismal response as well as in a minority of CAE and JAE patients. Discharges can occur with intermittent photic stimulation in most untreated patients with JME. And lastly, hyperventilation can trigger generalized spiking wave discharges. This is a bipolar montage of a 7-year-old boy showing the typical pattern for childhood epsons epilepsy in which there is characteristic 3 Hz spike in slow wave discharges that appear to be maximal in amplitude over the frontal regions. Note how there is no postictal slowing after the 3 Hz spike in wave complexes. This is a CS2 reference montage of the 7-year-old boy shown in the previous epoch of typical childhood epsons epilepsy. Note the generalized rhythmic high amplitude 3 Hz discharges that have maximal amplitude over the frontal regions. Again, note the lack of aftergoing post ictal slowing after the 3 Hz complexes. On this slide, we will discuss the recent 2022 diagnostic criteria for childhood epsons epilepsy. On the top left side of the table, under the column mandatory, these are essential features needed to fulfill a diagnosis of childhood epsons epilepsy. These include typical Epson seizures and typical EEG findings of 3 Hz generalized spike and wave discharges. Under the column alerts are criteria that are absent in the vast majority of patients who have a syndrome but rarely can be seen. Alerts alone would not exclude the syndrome but should cause the clinician to rethink the diagnosis and undertake further investigations to rule out other conditions. The more alerts that are present, the less confident one can be about a diagnosis of a specific syndrome. Some examples of alerts for childhood absence epilepsy include staring spells with typical duration greater than 30 seconds or with post confusion or fatigue, as well as EEG findings showing consistently unilateral epileptiform discharges, a lack of hyperventilation activated generalized spike and wave discharges, as well as a demographic and age of onset 2 to 3 years of age or 11 to 13 years of age and an abnormal neurological examination in addition to potentially relevant abnormal neuroimaging. And the last column, exclusionary, these are clinical and electrographic features that would go against the diagnosis of childhood absence epilepsy. Some examples include any of the following seizure types, either primary myoclonic seizures, prominent eyelid myoclonia, atonic seizures, and focal impaired awareness to name a few, as well as EEG findings showing diffuse background slowing, as well as moderate to profound intellectual disability, as well as cognitive stagnation or decline. Other studies, such as low CSF glucose, can also suggest and exclude the diagnosis of childhood absence epilepsy. This is a bipolar montage of a 13-year-old boy with juvenile absence epilepsy and typical 3 Hz generalized spike wave discharges during the drowsiness state, as depicted by the vertex waves outlined in the red circle that precede the generalized spike and wave complexes. During sleep, the discharges become more frequent and brief with enhanced polyspike component as outlined by the red box, especially during stages 1 and 2 of non-REM sleep. This is the same EEG shown in average montage of the 13-year-old boy with staring spells and brief loss of consciousness absence with typical 3 Hz generalized spike and wave discharges. Of note, the sensitivity of this EEG has been altered for better visualization of the spike and wave discharges. Again, appreciate the polyspike component outlined by the red circle and red star, which are enhanced during sleep. This slide shows the diagnostic criteria for juvenile absence epilepsy. 
the mandatory criteria needed for the diagnosis include typical Epson seizures and paroxysms of 3 to 5.5 Hz generalized spiking wave discharges on EEG, seizures with staring spells and duration greater than 30 seconds or with post confusion, Epson seizure frequency greater than 10 per day, and EEG findings showing lack of hyperventilation activated spiking wave discharges, persistent background slowing, should alert the clinician to rethink the diagnosis and undertake further investigation to rule out other conditions. And the same can be said about mild intellectual disability at the development at onset, relevant neurological examination abnormalities, abnormal imaging findings, and a course of illness showing a lack of generalized tonic-clonic seizures over the course of the epilepsy. Some exclusionary criteria that should point against juvenile absence epilepsy include having seizure types any different from typical absence seizures, e.g. findings showing consistent focal discharges, diffuse background slowing, or a recorded staring spell without e.g. correlate. Additionally, for juvenile absence epilepsy, if the age at onset is less than 8 or greater than 20, this should also suggest an alternate diagnosis other than juvenile absence epilepsy. Important to note that an MRI is not required for the diagnosis of JAE. And to briefly mention, in resource-limited regions, juvenile absence epilepsy can be diagnosed in persons without alerts who meet all other mandatory and exclusion criteria if they have a witness typical absence seizure with hyperventilation. This table compares childhood absence epilepsy with juvenile absence epilepsy. From the table, you can see that the usual age of onset for childhood absence epilepsy is 4 to 10 years in comparison to juvenile absence epilepsy, which is 9 to 13 years. The typical development for both syndromes is normal. In terms of absence frequency and duration between the two syndromes, there is typically a longer duration and se less severe symptoms in juvenile absence epilepsy when compared to childhood absence epilepsy. OIRDA, or occipital intermittent rhythmic delta activity, can be seen in 21% of childhood absence epilepsy and can be normal background EEG in juvenile absence epilepsy. In terms of interrectal epileptiform discharges in the awake state, you can see 2.5 to 4 Hz generalized spiking wave activity in the childhood absence epilepsy variant in comparison to the juvenile variant where you can see 3 to 5.5 Hz generalized spiking wave activity. Hyperventilation induction can be seen in both subtypes of absence epilepsy, childhood and juvenile. And lastly, to briefly recall, the ictal EEG for childhood absence epilepsy will be regular 3 Hz generalized spike in wave in comparison to juvenile absence epilepsy where you can see regular 3 to 5.5 Hz generalized spike in wave activity. And finally, to mention, you can see discharges that are disorganized eight times more frequently in juvenile absence epilepsy in comparison. Juvenile myoclonic epilepsy is the most common adolescent and adult onset of idiopathic generalized epilepsy syndromes and is characterized by myoclonic and generalized tonic-clonic seizures in an otherwise normal adolescent or adult. Myoclonic seizures typically occur shortly after awakening and when tired. The EEG shows 3 to 5.5 Hz generalized spike in wave and poly spike in wave discharges. Photosensitivity is common, occurring in up to 90% of individuals when appropriate photic stimulation testing methodology is used. Lifelong treatment is often required for this syndrome. Hyperventilation can induce generalized spiking wave and polyspike in wave patterns and even clinical absences. Sleep deprivation can enhance EEG abnormalities, especially the photoparoxysmal response. In this bipolar montage EEG of a 13-year-old boy, you can see fragmented 3 to 4 Hz generalized spike and polyspike in wave discharges that are noted to be maximum over the frontal leads. This average montage shows the same 13-year-old boy with juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Note the 4 Hz spike and poly spike in wave discharges that appear to be maximal in amplitude in the frontal leads. Additionally, note how some of the discharges are non-uniform and are fragmented. This is consistent with JME. In this table, we will go over the diagnostic criteria for juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. The mandatory criteria that are needed to fulfill the diagnosis include seizures, which are of the myoclonic type, as well as an EEG showing 3 to 5.5 Hz generalized spike or polyspike in wave discharges.
Some alerts that should suggest the clinician to consider alternative diagnosis include seizures with generalized tonic-clonic status epilepticus, as well as consistent unifocal semiology, as well as consistent unifocal myoclonus. The typical age of onset that should alert the clinician towards an alternate diagnosis is an age of onset between 8 to 9 years or 25 to 40 years. The exclusionary criteria that, if when met, should suggest an alternate diagnosis other than JME are seizure types other than myoclonic seizures, as well as EEG showing habitual myoclonic event captured on EEG and the absence of polyspike and spiking wave discharges, focal slowing, a consistent unilateral focal epileptiform discharges, as well as generalized spiking wave activity less than 2.5 Hz should all suggest an alternate diagnosis. Furthermore, an age of onset less than 8 years or greater than 40 years should also suggest an alternate diagnosis other than JME and would exclude the diagnosis of JME. This is a bipolar montage of a 22-year-old male showing 3 Hz generalized spike and polyspiking wave discharges that appear maximal in amplitude in the frontal regions. This patient had epilepsy with generalized tonic-clonic seizure alone. This is an average montage of the same 22-year-old patient with epilepsy with generalized tonic-clonic seizures alone, showing 3 Hz generalized spike and polyspiking wave discharges that appear to be maximal in amplitude in the frontal regions. In this table, we will go over the diagnostic criteria for epilepsy with generalized tonic-clonic seizures alone. The mandatory criteria needed to fill include seizures, which are generalized tonic-clonic seizures, and EEG showing 3 to 5.5 Hz generalized spike wave or polyspike wave. Some alerts that should suggest the clinician to consider alternative causes include seizures that are unifocal in semiology, as well as an age of onset that is between 5 to 9 or 26 to 40 years old. Some exclusionary criteria that when met rule out the diagnosis of epilepsy with generalized tonic-clonic alone are generalized myoclonic tonic-clonic seizures, which suggests juvenile myoclonic epilepsy and essentially any other seizure type. Furthermore, EEG findings showing focal slowing a consistently unilateral focal discharges, as well as a generalized slow spiking wave frequency at less than 2.5 Hz should all suggest and exclude the diagnosis of epilepsy with GTCA. It's important to note that an MRI is not required in every case, but should be considered with alerts if clinical concern for a possible structural lesion exists. Furthermore, in resource-limited regions, generalized tonic-clonic seizures alone cannot be diagnosed without an interictal EEG showing generalized spiking wave, as one cannot exclude focal onset without EEG. In this table, we will compare juvenile myoclonic epilepsy with generalized tonic-clonic seizures alone. The usual age of onset between the two syndromes is comparable, being between 10 to 24 years of age. The main seizure type between the two syndromes is different. With JME, the main seizure type is myoclonic seizures, and GTCA, the main seizure type is generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Febrile seizures can be seen in 15% of patients with GTCA. Absence seizures and myoclonic seizures are not present in GTCA. Both syndromes are triggered by sleep deprivation. The frequency between epileptiform discharges in the two syndromes is comparable at 3 to 5.5 Hz spike and polyspike in wave activity. Although in JME, the interictal epileptiform discharges may appear irregular. And in generalized tonic-clonic seizures alone, the interictal epileptiform discharges may be seen only in sleep. The ictal EEG between the two syndromes is also different. In JME, you can see generalized polyspiking wave with myoclonic jerks and 3.5 to 6 Hz generalized spiking wave or polyspiking wave with absence.
The ictal EEG for generalized tonic-clonic seizures alone will show generalized spikes with the tonic phase followed by spike in waves during the clonic phase. To wrap up, in this module we talked about idiopathic generalized epilepsy, including childhood absence epilepsy, juvenile absence epilepsy, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, and epilepsy with generalized tonic-clonic seizures alone.